All right, welcome YouTube land, Facebook land. Welcome to the back to school live stream event for Jim's American Academy Qatar. Welcome everyone. Uh, in some languages, they'll say assalamu alaikum, marhaba, guten tag, good morning, buenos dias, whatever you want to call it. We're very diverse over here in GAQ. So welcome everyone. I'm very excited today uh, to go through a couple of different topics, right? Number one, we do have some new school leaders in the school. So we got to introduce them, got to give them a proper Raptor welcome, all right? Number two, you know, I'm the parent relations executive. I've been getting a lot of questions about how everything's going to work. So all the questions that I receive, the most frequently asked questions, mm -hmm. I'm here to also give you the answers. And our expert panelists will give you the answers to a lot of the questions you had throughout the week that you sent to me. So hopefully that will be helpful, all right? And then the third aspect is just any questions you have, okay? Any questions that you have throughout the show, you'll be able to put in your comment section. Um, you'll also be able to put um, into your YouTube chat if you're on YouTube, okay? And so just keep in mind that we're gonna have all questions at the end of the show. We'll answer all of your questions at the end of the show. So we'll do a Q&A before we close out, all right? So hopefully everyone's excited. Um, and what we're going to do now, I'm going to put this message into the chat. And so everyone will be able to know uh, what to do in terms of the questions. And then first thing first, we're going to go through the introductions. There's no other proper way to introduce the school, but to also introduce the head of school um, at Jim's American Academy. He's been here since 2016. I enjoy working for him and with him. Um, hope he never leaves. Um, you know, everything that has happened in this school, a lot of it, the growth that you've seen, the NIAS accreditation, all the awards from the students and everything else, really from his direction. I'm not going to blow him up anymore. He's going to get uh, very shy and blush. Uh, so, Mr. Mark, can you introduce yourself first to our school community? Thanks so much, Justin. Uh, I hope I can live up to your confidence uh, and everybody else's. So, uh, yeah, as Justin said, uh, Mark Lentz had a school. Um, if you are a returning parent, uh, I'm guessing you already know me and that we've already met and we've probably sh shaken hands or uh, during COVID years at least waved or, or elbow bumped. Um, if you are new, uh, as Justin said, I've been here for um, four and a half years. I was, uh, my route to education was a bit circuitous. So before I was a teacher, I was a counselor. Um, and worked with troubled teens in the state of Florida for uh, about 10 years. Um, and I've been in or abroad for about 20 plus years and working in education for a little over 30. It frightens me to say that it's that long. Um, I don't feel that old. Uh, but uh, yeah, just uh, I've had a, I've had a great a great run in education and uh, of all the schools I've been to, it's uh, GAQ is, is probably the friendliest, most welcoming, and uh, most positive that I've been at. And I hope that uh, if you're a new family, you experience that as well. Thank you for that, Mark. Really appreciate it. Um, next, we'll start with our new school leaders in the school. So first and foremost, we'll start with Mr. Jordan Shear. Um, I have you know, a lot of great things to say about him from the limited time that we have known as well. But I'm gonna let him tell you first, right? because he has just as good of a mouthpiece that I do as well. So he'll be able to articulate for himself and introduce himself to the community. So Mr. Jordan, can you let everyone know who you are? Thanks for the introduction, Justin. Um, as you said, my name is Jordan Shear. I am the new uh, lower school or elementary principal. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Uh, I landed in Qatar about a week and a half ago, so I'm, I'm very new to the country, but uh, the staff has been incredibly welcoming. And, uh, and I'm really excited to be part of the team here. Uh, a little bit about my background, I'm originally from New Jersey uh, in the United States, but I've been abroad for 12 years. Yeah, Justin and I have that in common. Um, been abroad for 12 years, uh, but this is my 18th year in education. Uh, I started out as a third grade classroom teacher, went up to fifth grade classroom teacher, and then to a seventh grade classroom teacher. I really like the odd number of years. Um, I've been, I did the classroom for about 10, for 10 years, and then this is my eighth year in administration. Uh, during that time, I have served as a school director, as a building principal, and now here I am as the lower school principal, and, and I'm excited for the new role. Uh, I'm excited to be part of the team here, and uh, excited to be living in Qatar. 
So thank you, and, and I look forward to meeting all of you in person soon. Thanks, Jordan. Really appreciate that as well. All right, so we have another new member to our SOT or senior leadership team. Um, so Mr. Jeffrey Wessel, I really like uh, his questions. Uh, I've been observing his questions and getting to know how everything works. I really appreciate it. So I'm really interested to know who he is over the course of this year. I think everyone else will be interested to know who he is now. So Mr. Jeffrey, can you let us know who you are, introduce uh, yourself to our community? Yeah, hi everybody. Um, thank you for the very friendly and uh, warm welcome, Justin, and, and everybody else in the community. It's, it's been great. My name is Jeffrey Wessel. Um, I'm the new upper school assistant principal. <clears throat> I've been in, in country just like Justin for just about a week and a half or so, uh, but I'm not new to the region. I've been in the Middle East uh, as an educator for quite a while. In fact, worked for GEMS Education for five years in Dubai and then in Singapore. Um, I come here uh, with great enthusiasm and a lot of uh, a lot of positive thoughts about how things are going to go this year. Uh, I've been in a handful of different schools, and uh, since meeting the rest of the senior leadership team and the new staff, and then today meeting the the returning staff, uh, I've I've I can honestly say I've never quite been as confident as I am now that uh, things are going to work out real well. I've been confident. And comfortable and it feels like home already. So uh, I look forward to meeting the rest of the uh, GAAQ community. Thank you, Jeffrey, appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna use your voice probably for some voiceovers at some point in our, in our videos. <laughs> hey, right. you know, that, that's uh, yeah, a little hobby of mine. Uh, uh, I've been, I didn't even I know was, that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, some of my uh, former students would say, you know, you sound like the male Siri, but with a deeper voice. <laughs> That's amazing. I didn't even know that you did that. That's amazing. So welcome. Look at that chemistry already, right? And so the next person I'm going to introduce, we all should know who he is, right? I think he's the longest tenured uh, member uh, uh, in this whole live stream, uh, especially. Uh, but he's been here for a long time, and I'd love to see his growth uh, throughout the years. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's introduce uh, Mr. Eamon Gregory. Can you tell us who you are once again? Hi, yeah, I'm Eamon Gregory. I'm the upper school principal. Uh, so this will be my, every year I seem to have a different role or a different job. Uh, last year I started as acting principal. Um, and thankfully they made it official halfway through the year last year. So this is going to be my first year officially starting as uh, the principal of upper school for grade six through 12. And just building on what everybody's been saying, I think, we have the new staff and our, uh, all of our returning staff in the school today, and there's just great, a great positive sort of vibe from everybody. And I think everybody just can't wait to get the school year started, and we're all looking forward to having a great year. Awesome. Thank you for that. And it, it has a different vibe today. You know, everyone's here today, the returning, uh, the new teachers. It, it, was, it was loud. It was, it was ready. I felt like I wanted to party a little bit, you know, everybody coming back and you know, everything like that. So it was really good today to see everyone. Um, so I guess I'll introduce myself. And so I'm uh, Mr. Tyler. I'm the parent relations executive here, but I do a little bit of everything, marketing, social media, communications, PR, a lot, a lot of different things, tours. So I probably met a lot of the families that are on this live stream today. And, um, you know, for me, I'm here to be a parent advocate. So any questions that you have, uh, if you don't know where to go to, if maybe a teacher or SLT person may not have answered the email in time or you have additional questions, I mean, I'm here. I'm your customer service wing for the school. So myself and the receptionist, we're really here to help you. And I feel like that's one of the best things that we do in the school is the customer service. You won't go too far without hearing from us if you emailed us or contacted us, okay? So I just want you to know that you have a dedicated person for any type of concerns or questions or even praise. If you wanna heap praise on us, we'll take that too, all right? So let's move on, because we're here for the main event, all right? We're here for the questions about back to school. How does it work? What are we gonna do? What is blended learning? Are we going online, right? All of these other questions. So we have a, a bevy of questions lined up for our panelists here, and we're gonna answer them best as I can, best as we can. Um, and then the questions came from all the parents. 
I received so many um, questions about everything. So I thought I'll just compile uh, the questions in this type of forum and have everyone answer. And so you can also see the new leadership and also the old leadership that's coming back as well. So we're gonna get this thing started right now with the first question. Why did GAQ choose this blended learning plan? I think Mark, you're the best one to kind of go forward with this one. So I'm gonna leave it to you. Yeah, happy to talk about that. That's a, that's a great question. We answered that a lot last year. Um, and let me first start by saying there'll be a, a, a slight tweak in the blended learning plan this year from last. Um, and I'll elaborate a little bit more on that. Um, but we, we didn't choose this blended learning plan lightly. Um, we looked at the literature that was out there. Um, the, the COVID pandemic has, has obviously caused blended learning to come to the forefront as schools all over the world have had to learn and adapt to it. Um, but blended learning and, and online learning opportunities have existed for, for 20 years or more now. Um, in, in various times in various places in the in the, in the world, so there's a there pre COVID there was a, a fair bit of literature um, to look into and explore and research the best models of of blended learning. Um, that literature has definitely exploded over the last two years, um, but the the literature that we looked at indicated that the the schools that generally failed were the ones that really tried to closely re recreate the school environment rather than accepting that a blended model is is very different um and the literature that we read said that the it, it made sense to recreate as closely as possible a traditional classroom model when students were actually on campus but that there was very little value in trying to recreate a traditional classroom model when students were at home. Um, colloquially, worldwide, that's become known as room and Zoom. Um, and I know that teacher uh, parents often ask about that. The idea is, well, I, I want my kid to have the same access to that classroom information. And when they, they think of same access, if there's a nine period day, they want their child sitting in front of the computer for those nine periods. And with the idea that somehow by sitting and watching what's going on in the classroom, um, that they're getting the same quality of interaction and instruction. Um, I can say as a, a blended learning student, I was the, my doctorate in education, I was one of the first international students. Uh, and that was the model they tried with me originally. I was in a cohort of about 15 doctoral students. And I was the one guy that wasn't in the room. And there, I was on a computer that they were trying to move around and trying to help me be included. And it was a, it was a miserable experience that I got very little out of. Um, and, and much like my personal experience, the literature shows that when students are at home, they, they, they're sitting and watching what's going on in another classroom is a significant waste of their time. Um, there's a lot of literature out about independent learning and, and inquiry-based learning. And so our model is really designed to maximize their time on campus and then maximize their time at home by providing them with clear expectations, clear learning opportunities, and giving them the, the instruction and the material that they need to be able to do those things independently at home and then revisit that when they get back on campus. Um, all of that said, one of our ideas last year was because our, our fully online learning was so popular and we got such good reviews, to have a fully online day on Thursday for all students. Um, I still believe that was a great idea, but we had a lot of parent um, requests and student requests that like, if we're really gonna value that time on campus, why don't we have them on campus again on Thursdays? And so we wanna listen to our constituents. Um, I do think there was a lot of value in that Thursday, but I think we can also find a lot of value in having kids back on campus on Thursdays. So the one change we're gonna make this year is that we will not be having virtual Thursdays anymore. Um, and students will be back on campus on Thursdays. So we'll still have our red and our blue groups. Those will still be uh, red, blue, red, blue uh, for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then Thursday, we will alternate red and blue every other week um, to try and get your students back on campus that, that one more day a week whenever possible. All right. 
And then from the uh, lower school and upper school perspective, is there anything else to add to what Mr. Marcus said? Not, not really from me, Justin. Just it's a, it's another time. Um, you know, we had, we did introduce some great things last year, like the mentor program, um, but they were sort of halfway through the year where it was more beneficial. So it's not really going to impact that at the beginning of the year. And um, and I know we had sort of mixed responses about the the Zoom and, and stuff with with students, but I think, like Mark said, um, having students on campus, I think, is more important to us for this year moving forward. And I think when I looked at the schedule, the only, only real difference between um, uh, a normal day and the Thursday schedule is like five minutes in class time. So right. it's essentially, it, it's not that much of a difference than a normal day. So why not have the students on campus? Right. Okay. All right. So uh, I think it's for me, sorry, Justin, real, sorry, Justin, real, is, is for the elementary, I just want to let all parents of pre-K and KG1 students know that we will still be having your students on campus every day. Um, we have worked out a system where uh, those students will be, you know, we still are, are operating under the limit of a 15 student per room maximum, uh, but we have the staff on campus that we're going to be able to split the class in half and the teacher will be able to work with both sections of the class every day. So our younger students, our early childhood students, uh, will not miss any days on campus, which is, I, I think, is crucial for the development of that age group. Very good point. I'm glad I gave everyone the opportunity to speak individually for the department. Very good point. So, all right. I think it's safe to say we can go to the second question. And um, let's go post it right here. All right, so we're going to post it on the bottom here. So based on the red and blue color groups, how does a returning or new student know their color group? For, I'll take my one for upper school at least. Um, so returning, uh, returning students, their color hasn't changed. If they were red last year, they're red this year. If they were blue last year, they're blue. Um, so that hasn't changed. The first red day on campus for them will be next Wednesday, August 25th, and the blue day will be Thursday, August 26th. Uh, all of the new students who are coming to campus, uh, our admissions team should have, uh, when they were enrolling, either communicated their color or will be in the next few days. But if not, worst case scenario, they show up on campus on August 24th, which is the first day for all new new students to the, to the school. When they show up, we'll make sure that they, they know their colors because when they come in on campus that day in upper school, we'll break them up into red groups and their blue groups so that we, we have that uh, two separate groups and there's no crossover. Um, and, you know, obviously with COVID, we need to keep those groups separated. And um, so that will happen on that day. All right. And for elementary school, I can echo what Eamon just said. It's, it's the same deal. Um, colors are unchanged from last year. And if you have not already received information about what color your student will be, uh, red or blue, you'll be receiving that information very shortly. Um, and same thing next Tuesday will be the first day for new students. Uh, returning students, depending on their color, will come back either Wednesday or Thursday next week. And I have a question to clarify as well. If new students came in on Tuesday, are they expected to come in Wednesday and Thursday? Or is that only for returning students on Wednesday and Thursday? No, good question. Uh, uh, and I think it's the same, Jordan, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, on Wednesday, that will be all students who are red. And on Thursday, it will be all of the students who are blue. So when the new student, if, they're, if they come in on, on Tuesday and they're a red student, they'll be in Tuesday and Wednesday. If they're a blue mm -hmm. student, they'll be in on Tuesday and Thursday. All exactly right. the same for elementary. All right. Thank you for the clarification, y'all. Appreciate that. All right. So let's go to the next question here. What will lower school and upper school students do on their orientation days? It's a good question. Valid question. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and start this off. Um, for elementary school, it's not going to be a full day. It's a shortened period. Uh, the goal is for them to meet their teacher, get acquainted with where their classroom is, um, and have any any relevant or, or uh, pressing questions answered uh, for the both both the parents and the students. Um, 
we'll send it the schedule for that shortly, uh, exactly of, of when the students are invited on campus. But again, it'll be a short day uh, for elementary school. For upper school, a little bit different. We're probably going to have a longer day. I, I haven't got the timings exactly yet. I'm ju I just I'm going to meet with my team today and tomorrow and just uh, come out all of the fine details. But essentially, what happens on an orientation is we we get them set up. We make sure that they get connected to the Wi-Fi, that they get their school Gmail, that they get access to our student management system, Alma. We go over the behavior policy. We go over the rules of the school, and you know all of that type of stuff. We do some fun stuff as well. It's not all just, you know, chalk and talk. We do some icebreakers. We make sure the students get to know each other. And and when they get in on the, the returning students orientation, that they get to meet and, and, and fully, you know, emerge into the, into the system and get to know and make new friends on those first two days. So it's a bit more of a relaxed atmosphere. And, but there are some important details and stuff that they need to know. So it is important. I think at the moment we are also working on something that is a, a, a digital uh, sort of orientation packet like we had last year. So that if students aren't here and they do miss it because of uh, quarantine or whatnot, that we will have a digital packet that can be sent out to families. And I'll probably have on my either on my student bulletin or on the parent bulletin, I'll probably attach, uh, probably on both, I'll, I'll attach that so that even if they do miss those days, they get it. Again, I would say that the most important thing that we can't really replicate through a digital packet is those social uh, interactions that they get with their teachers and other classmates. And I think that's why it's really important to make sure that you're on campus and in, in, in for those orientation days. But worst case scenario, we will have a digital packet. All right. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. All right. Um, and the next question is more about online. I got a qu lot of questions about online. So is there an online option for students who will not be in the country or if they're quarantined at the start of the school year? What do you think? Uh, I'll take that one, Justin. Um, so that is something we're still seeking clarity on. The latest Ministry of Education directive says that students are required to be on campus uh, and, and the only online option is for students that have a Ministry of Public Health certified high risk um, category. Um, so I, I don't know what that will mean for those students who aren't in country. Um, and obviously that will differ a little bit case by case. Um, so the, 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 the shortest answer is at the moment, we're only being required to have it for those students who are fully, uh, you know, have a, a doctor's uh, a medical note that is certified by the MOPH that it's a high risk category. Um, that said, if your student is not going to be in the country for a specific reason, um, please let us know so we know how to direct you what your best course of action is because that's gonna that's gonna differ for every family in in terms of where their child is at and how long they're going to be out of the country. And we do want to help you and and make sure that your kid's educational needs are met. Yeah, I think linking into what Mark says, we, we do try to accommodate as much as we can here. Um, but we do want all students on campus as much as possible. So I know cer certain students are going to be in quarantine and whatnot, maybe if they just arrive the day before school starts. Um, but officially from the MOPH, that's not a high risk group. And, you know, but we'll try to accommodate as long as people reach out to us um, and email us and let us know their circumstances and situations. All right, and to answer that question, if there's any families that are going to be late to school for whatever reason, please email me, okay? That is my email address there. We're keeping a running list of students who are not gonna be here the first day of school, uh, just so we have a record of when you'll be back, all right? Because attendance is very important, especially in the beginning of the school year, right? So please email me. If you're not going to be here the first day of school for your orientation or any extended period of time, okay? And that'll be my email address there. I'll bring it up again at some point at the end of the live stream. All right. So let's proceed to the next question, which I think Mr. Mark had touched on in his last response. Is there an online option for high risk students, right? If so, what does this option look like in lower school? and in upper school. I think Mr. Mark should take um, this question first and then it can cascade down to everyone else. 
Yeah, um, that one. That one's the one I feel pretty confident on, based on the ministry directive that went out yesterday. Um, you know, there are there are definitely clearly obvious medical reasons for some students that are that are easy to prove, um, and and with that individual students. Um, specific high needs and and the MOPH is is the the organization that that makes the most sense to be able to verify if it's a legitimate high risk or not. Um, what I think from I was in a about a, an hour long meeting with the Ministry of Education yesterday with various heads of schools and from what they stated to us is what they're trying to eliminate is the families who simply didn't don't have a medical diagnosis for a high risk but didn't quite feel comfortable putting their students in, in school. Um, and the, the MOE is really trying to ensure that, you know, um, grades there, that was very clearly stated in, in this circular that went out that is legally required for grades one through 12 to physically attend school on campus. Um, and so the, I know from the MOE that is, that's a very big push. Um, and we'll obviously have to support that. Um, that said, they like I said, they were also very clear that they don't want to put anybody with a legitimate medical reason um, that is legitimately high risk in in any sort of danger, and that schools will have to have a an online option for those students, but it will have to be approved by the Ministry of Public Health, not by the school. All right, um, Jordan, Jeffrey, Amen. Anything else you want to say about it before we go ahead to the next question? All right, there we go. I feel like a judge, you know, case closed, right? Done. <laughs> all right, let's go to the next question. And by the way, everyone, for all the viewers watching in YouTube land, Facebook land, um, make sure that you write your questions into the comment section of Facebook, YouTube chat. Um, we are not ignoring the questions. We're going to answer them at the end of the Q&A. This is just a reminder for anyone who came in a little bit later to the live stream. We will be answering those questions at the end. We have a couple of other questions left, um, but we will get to them very soon. So thank you for your continued patience. So let's move to the next question. On the days that my child will be learning at home, what will my child do? Will students have access to teacher office hours? Will there be live online classes these days? Floor is yours. <laughs> I can start that one off. Um, in elementary school, it's, it's going to be a combination of things. There, there won't be live classes online those days because the teacher will be occupied teaching the students that are in school on that day. Uh, and as Mark said, you know, we're trying to avoid the room and Zoom format because it, it's, it's just not a, a viable or, or productive format. Um, what your students will be doing is they'll be working with materials that were given to them in school by the teacher the day before. So they'll be bringing those things home to work on. Additionally, they'll have access to a program called Seesaw, which I'm sure mo most of you are familiar with. Uh, Seesaw is a, 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 an assignment um, creation and, and submission platform that lets kids work on things independently, submit their work. Teachers can comment on it, review it, and send it back to the students. And it, it does create a bit of a dialogue between the students and teacher, even if the student isn't physically in school. Uh, so between those two programs, um, that's, that's going to be a lot of what the students are able to do uh, at home on the days that they're not on campus. Yeah, um, for upper school, uh, Alma is the student management system that when, you know, if you're a new student, you're coming in, we get you set up on that in the first day. Um, it's sort of linked to your school Gmail account. That is another thing that we give you. Um, but asynchronous work is posted uh, on the off days um, or students have homework or assignments that we expect them to be waking up and, and, and working on. Um, we had students where it, it's sort of one of those things that encourages independence and uh, responsibility. And I think in the long term, it's gonna really pay off uh, overall in, in, in the education field worldwide. Um, but yeah, so on their, on their day when they're at home, they'll probably have assignments uh, and work posted from their teachers and videos and resources that they need to look at um, to prepare them either for the next day or to review what they'd covered in class the day before. And um, so that's sort of what they're working on on their days off. I wouldn't say days off. I shouldn't say days off <laughs> on, on their day in school. They should they're be not technically in school. school. <laughs> yeah. You know, something ahead, that I would, I would add, uh, if, you, if, if it's all right, Justin, is that, yes. you know, I've, when it comes to the, the, the so-called room and Zoom, 
I've experienced this now from both a, a professional. So I've been on this. I've been in the classroom trying to teach students at home and in the, in the classroom. And I've been on the other side of it where as a parent uh, with my my kids trying to go through the same thing. And um, I can say that the 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 quality of, of what you're getting in that environment, everybody, the kids in school, the kids at home and the, the teacher themselves, the experience, um, it doesn't it doesn't live up to the, the kind of effort that it takes to try to put that in place. And so I think that when when you've got one of the things that we're, we're really working on is making sure that students are self-directed and they're making inquiry themselves, that they're they're trying to drive their own learning. And we're going to try to continue to expand on and be creative about what students are doing uh, on those not off days, like Eamon said, but on those days when they're at home working, they're continuing on what they had done the day before. Uh, and it's rather than see it as sort of a, a detriment to them, it's an opportunity for them to push themselves uh, and come up and hopefully they come back the day after that with a lot more questions and, and they can really drive that inquiry and that, that independence that is, you know, learning a lot of stuff in school is, is really important and a lot of content matter, but that ability to learn how to learn uh, is, is especially uh, important and when you're moving towards getting into university. If I can uh, touch Justin, on the... Yeah, oh, go, no, sorry, Mark, go ahead. Um, no, you go first. Uh, I wanted to touch on the one part of the question that we didn't answer yet, which is the uh, the office hours. Uh, we are looking at, at creating a schedule for office hours. We don't have that ready yet. Uh, we understand the importance of, of having students, especially those that may have a medical diagnosis that can't come on campus ever. We know how important it is for those students to have access to their teacher live in person. And we are trying to come up with a viable schedule for that. Uh, and that'll be released as soon as we have it. Uh, I know it was something that was used last year. Uh, and as with everything, you know, as you move forward, you tweak things, you adjust things, trying to make them better uh, and, and more beneficial to the students. Awesome. Um, thanks, Jordan. I wanted to build on what Jeff said and an experience as a parent. Um, you know, people talk about the loss of learning that happened during COVID, but people don't often think of the the learning that did happen. Um, and I heard Jeff use the talk about that idea of independence and inquiry and, and self-directed learning. And so I thought I'd share a, a personal story as a parent of my uh, my son over the summer missing his buddies. Um, and he'd recently graduated, I say graduated, finished grade two at our school, having gone through the same sort of blended learning problems that you guys are all facing. Um, and, and I know how hard that is as a parent. Um, but there was a moment where he said, hey, my friends from Qatar invited me onto a Zoom to play a video game that we found that we can all play together on Zoom. And I've accepted the Zoom, and but I don't have the video game that they have. And we figured out how to download it, but the iPad's memory cache is full. And my wife and I were sort of busy and said, look, man, we don't have time to like, no, 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 sorry, daddy. I, we figured out, we went on Google and figured out how to erase the games that we need to on the memory cache in order to download the game that we need. I don't need your help. I just need your permission. And sort of like, you know, overwhelmed, like, yeah, cool. And then ran off and, and figured it all out completely on his own. I, I guarantee you second graders weren't able to do that pre COVID. Um, and that is, that is independent learning. Um, that is a skill that our kids now have having gone through this that that they would not have had that they're going to need to succeed in in the world that 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 they're going to live in. That's a that's a very good story actually. Um, <laughs> no, it, it it just made me like smile, you know, because that's kind of what we want to foster some independence. You know, as they go from KG two to grade one, that's what we really focus on a lot more independence. Uh, so it's really cool that, you know, he exercised his ability to do that and he asked your permission, right? That's nice as a son as well. <laughs> it's pretty cool. All right. So we'll move on. We have about four or five more questions, right? Five more questions and we're going to get to uh, the questions from uh, our parents and our students. I do see some students in the comments as well. All right. 
So let's answer this. I think we kind of answered some of this already, um, but let's go to the next one. We answered this already um, before. Uh, what is the main mode of communication for lower school and upper school? Is it class dojo for lower school? Is it AMA for upper school? And how does it all work? Uh, I'll go first. And I know because I'm, I'm reading the YouTube questions and, and the Facebook questions as they come in. So I'll try to get some of those answered before we get to the end. But um, So ALMA is going to be, uh, again, the point area for everybody for upper school for grades 6 through 12. That's where parents get access and they can see their child's attendance for the day, whether they were late to class, whether they were absent for their first class um, or whatnot. And it's also where I'm going to have teachers post a bulletin and asynchronous work um, and where students can also get access to their schedules and um, the Zoom links if they are going to Zoom and meet their teachers and the lesson layout. Now, that being said, um, the bulletin where the lesson is posted could be that it's a link to a Google Doc where they have the lesson and, and it's a format like that. It could be a link to the Google Classroom or whatever. Uh, some of the teachers are going to use Google Classroom again this year. Um, so it's going to change and vary depending on class, but for all intents and purposes, uh, Alma is going to be the, the place where you can get all of the information that you need. Um, I do post information there and bulletins and important links. So bulletins and stuff that go out to students are all done through uh, an advisory class that they will be added to in Alma. Um, and again, their schedules and all of that, uh, which is another question that's going to come up, is all in Alma, and that will all go live on August 24th. Jordan? Yeah, so the for elementary, uh, communication is going to be primarily done through Class Dojo. Uh, that's where you're going to get your blasts, you're going to get your teacher communication. Um, and that's done because it's it's a simple way. It pops up on your phone. It's it's an easy way of communication from elementary. Um, Alma, we do have Alma in elementary school, but that's typically going to be used just for internal purposes, like attendance. Uh, it's also going to be used for report cards uh, and to check grades. But that's that's it. Students aren't really involved. Elementary students aren't really involved in using Alma. Uh, I did see a question pop up on Facebook about attendance, uh, so I can answer that while I, I'm going here. Um, Attendance will be taken daily for all students. Um, students that are at home working will be marked as present online. Um, so they are marked as being present. Um, and then students that are here in the school will be marked as present or absent, depending. Uh, but that I did see that question pop up. All right, yeah, that, that is just helpful. It's really helpful because we do have some new families who may not know about the systems. I think Class Dojo is kind of universal. I feel like a lot of people know it, um, but Alma is something that's a little bit more native for us. Um, so it's really good for the parents to know the main mode of communication. And also parents, guess what? I'm also another means of communication as well, okay? Um, where I come in is more so where if you have already previously emailed a teacher about something, uh, maybe you know by the slight chance that you didn't hear back from the teacher, um, or sometimes you don't. You need more clarification. You need more education on why we do something or how it works. I'm also another way that you can come talk to me or email me, and I can be able to be another resource, another layer for you as well. Um, so parents always routinely come to me for more information on how things are done, more education on the American curriculum, and just to make sure that their requests are being heard. Some are confidential. Some are not. You also have another arm. I'm just letting you know that, you know, you have a parent relations executive for you as an advocate as well. All right. I wouldn't say I'm main, though, but I'm definitely one of the, the, the key options that you have. All right. So <laughs> let's go to the next question. This question is always a question of interest and intrigue in our school. How does Arabic, Islamic studies and Qatar history work for lower school? How does it work for upper school? And Jordan, if you can speak first about lower school, because it's going to be different than upper school, um, and then Amy can go ahead and talk about upper school after that. Sure. Um, you know, the requirement for uh, Arabic and Islamic and Qatar history um, has been extended downward. So actually KG1 students will be having a requirement this year as well. Um, 
So we are actually currently working on our schedules to make sure that we're meeting all the ministry requirements and making sure that all students have access to these courses. Uh, and that is, at the moment, honestly, a work in progress. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we create the best schedule possible for both our teachers and our students. Uh, but we are aware of all the requirements, and, and I can guarantee that all students will receive access to those subjects. Um, love talking about this one every time. Um, Arabic and Islamic is mandated by the Ministry of Education for uh, all um, Arabic nationality countries. Uh, so if you're registered with the Ministry of Education as Arab, uh, coming from one of their countries, I think there's like 24, 23 countries, um, then you are mandated to take Arabic and Islamic native. Um, Islamic non-native is an option uh, for students who come from um, other countries. They can take Islamic non-native. And Arabic is an option for all students. Um, however, I it is taught at sort of a native level. Uh, it's not really sort of a beginner level. So I don't really recommend that for students coming from other countries that don't really have a background in Arabic. That's why we offer French and Spanish to other, to other language subjects. Um, and then Qatar history is in every class, grade six through nine. Uh, so every student will have Qatar history um, once a week or whatever the, the, the required uh, time is. Um, and after ninth grade, it stopped. They don't do it in 10th, 11th or 12th grade. So um, uh, for Jordan and, and, and Mark, I have a, a clarification on lower school. Um, I think it will help a lot of other families as well. So we do have a really good world languages class, right? For that's grade two to grade five. How does that work in respect to non-native and native um, Arabic speakers, right? For terms of their classes. Jordan, you want this one or you want me to take it? All right, got it. Um, world languages is something new that we added last year um, because we had uh, lots of parent requests that uh, if we have French and Spanish in, in upper school, why can't we have access to that in lower school? Um, and so uh, for our students who are not Arab natives, um, they have access to this world language program if, if they want, um, in which case they will get a mix of Arabic, French, and Spanish. Um, and it's sort of a the sampler platter course, if you will, to get them prepared so they know what language they want to choose when they hit um, grade six and that they're prepared to choose any of those languages. All right. I just, you know, thought that would be uh, helpful. I have about three tours today and every time it came up <laughs> about world languages and Arabic. So I'm glad that we had the chance to answer this question. It's always one of my favorite questions. All right, so I promise you we have the last two questions for our panelists before we get into the Q&A. These are some easier questions. Um, and more so, the first question is gonna be for upper school and lower school. The last question is gonna be for lower school. Uh, so when does a student wear their gym uniform versus their school uniform? I haven't uh, talked with my PE department to, to make a decision on that right now. So I, I'm going to actually not answer that question and get back to you, but I will communicate it to the students. And I'm sure once they meet their PE teachers next week, that the PE teachers will tell them exactly when they're to wear them. Um, at the moment, high school students do have PE every day, but we don't. Uh, we have to seek clarification on what PE looks like this year. If it's health class, it's going to be you know, uh, they won't need to bring in their PE uniform at the beginning of the year. And anyway, in in sort of a perfect world, uh, it is the, the PE uniform. They would bring the PE uniform in, get changed into their PE uniform, have PE, and then get changed back into their uniform. That's sort of the, the format for 6 through 12 in PE anyway. Uh, but at the moment, it's obviously just... A little bit different depending on, on what we can do in PE classes and when students have PE because of the red blue uh, rotation. I know that didn't help overall to clarify that. Um, but <laughs> and Mr. Gregory, in, 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 in the US, the way you answered it in the beginning, we'll call that pleading the fifth. <laughs> the way you answered it. 
<laughs> but it's there's a reason a lot of teachers go into politics, trust me. <laughs> yeah, I see it. I see it. Um, Jordan, you talked to us about lower school and the expectations for uh, the uniform. Well, and I'm going to kind of plead the fifth as well. As I mentioned at the beginning, I am still learning systems here and, and kind of absorbing as much information as I can. And, and that has not crossed my desk yet. So Mark, being the parent of an elementary student, I think is probably the better person to answer at least how it worked in the past. Um, it is something that I definitely will bring up with the rest of my lower uh, lower school admin team and, and talk about if we want to adjust that for this year. But I'll, I'll let Mark take at least how it worked in the past. Uh, go ahead. Sorry, I got lost in the uh, the switch from person to person. Um, tell me what what am I? What exactly is it? I'm. What's what's the condensed version of what I should answer as a parent? <laughs> when do uh, lower element? When do elementary students wear their PE uh, uniforms versus their school sorry. uniform? Yeah. Sorry, I I thought you guys had moved on to something and I'd missed something. Um, yeah. Uh, you know what the the PE uniform. Uh, it, they they will have PE days in lower school and it will be, you you will know. Um, I don't know a better way to put that. Like the, 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 my student, for example, his teacher last year was Mr. Ben and Mr. Ben would give a weekly schedule and I we knew which days he had which subjects. Um, and so you can see if they have PE on that given day, then they wear their PE uniform if they don't have PE on that given day, then they don't wear their uniform. Um, the problem in upper school is we have a, a, a nine period schedule. Um, not that students are taking nine classes, but they're taking all the same classes every day. So it's a question of what they're doing in PE. Are we allowed to have changing rooms? Are we not allowed to have changing rooms? It's a much more, there's a lot more that goes into it in, in upper school, but lower school, you will know based on what your, the schedule that your teacher puts out. If they have PE, they wear their PE uniform. If they don't have PE, they don't wear their PE uniform. And Mark, um, just for clarification, they start wearing PE uniforms in grade three, right? I believe grade three, or maybe it's earlier. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's yeah. no, because my my little guy wasn't in grade three, so right. um, I think it's I think it's first grade. First grade, yeah. Okay, that yeah. could change as well. Okay, cool. I thought this would be an easy question, but yeah, it seems like we have still that some work to do. That wasn't an easy question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was assuming, right? I was like, oh my goodness, this is easy. But yeah, okay. Glad I included it, I guess, right? Um, cool. So let's go to the last question before we go to the Q&A. Um, in which grades do students nap in lower school? Is there an alternative to napping? Well, in lower school, they nap in our pre-K class, which is the three to four-year-old class, uh, and our KG1 class, which is the four to five-year-old class. Um, at the moment, again, you know, I'm, as I learn the systems, I'm not aware of any alternative to napping. Um, but with the split into, re into two different rooms, uh, maybe there is an option. It's something that I will look into. Uh, I'm happy to do that. Um, but based on what I know now, students in the in the pre-K and KG one classes have scheduled nap time every day. The um, the parents who haven't wanted their child to nap previously have always come and picked them up early. So there's sort of two release times in in K in pre-K and KG one. Um, but KG two and above, there is no nap time. So it's uh, there's not only is there not an alternative to napping, there's just no napping. Yeah, and then I tell parents a lot that, you know, because of the COVID restrictions, um, we can't really have the playroom as an option. We used to have playrooms. So if you didn't want to nap, you could play, you know, while other kids would nap, supervised, obviously. Uh, but now it's more so if your kid doesn't want to sleep, we just ask for them to lay down quietly, you know. Um, that's kind of the only alternative to napping at that point. Um, so, and typically napping is also helpful um, because if they have siblings that are older, you know, gives them time to nap. And then by the time dismissal happens for the older sibling, they'll be able to pick up the younger sibling and the whole family can go home that same period, same time period. Um, so that's helpful as well. All right. We are at the end of the questions that I have fielded from the parents. OK, so it's time to put up the comments or questions from our students and parents in the comment section. So. I'll put up the first question here. 
And that's for Mr. I'm gonna, Gregory. I'm going to be blunt and quick with these. So uh, I'm going to yeah. say that's uh, August 24th. Uh, if you're a new student, you'll come in and we will get you set up on the student management system, Alma. Uh, and once you log in there, you will get your schedule. And um, so that would be where you get that. And okay. August 24th is for newbies. August 25th is for uh, red day students. And August 26th is for the blue day students. So all students red on the Wednesday, all students blue on a Thursday. Yeah. All right, cool, cool. All right, next question. Did, did you have a new approach for home education this year and how to make the learning procedure more interesting for the student? Mark, you want to take that one? Yeah, uh, I was just about to. Um, I, I think yes and no. Um, to some extent, we recognize, uh, as I mentioned, I mean, when we were fully online, I was a parent at home trying to do my job while my wife was trying to do her job and while both of our kids were trying to do online learning. Um, I, I definitely get that uh, blended learning is not ideal if you're a parent at home with your student. Um, that, trust me, we did. I think one of the questions I, I've gotten before is why did you choose blended learning? I promise you, I will never choose blended learning. <laughs> Whenever there's an option to have kids 100% on campus, they will be 100% on campus. I promise that. Um, but if, if we have a blended learning model, I think no matter how hard any school tries, um, there is it's going to be difficult sometimes as a parent to keep that student engaged at home. Um, the best advice we have for parents is to set regular hours um, to try and keep your child on a schedule, um, to try and have a very clear space or structure where they do that work so they're not uh, multitasking while they're doing it. And then what we will do from our end is continue to do our best to make sure that they've got access to their teacher as much as possible, that the explanation of what needs to get done um, when they're at home on their asynchronous work is very clear so that the students uh, know exactly what it is they need to do. Um, and in, in terms of making it more interesting, I think that uh, honestly is probably, you know, uh, in the, all of your questions have been great questions, but your question uh, honestly is probably the best one. That is my question. Um, I think we did a good job last year. Um, I think we were hit with some untenuable circumstances. And I, I think my students, my teachers, and my parents were, you know, one of our core values is tenacity. I think we did a good job last year, but last year this was all new. Um, so that is our a question we are asking of ourselves and of our teachers. Um, how do we make the asynchronous work um, even more valuable than it was last year? Um, my teachers have tons of experience at, at teaching uh, students on campus. I'm not worried about that aspect of this blended learning model. Um, but this will be a focus for us this year. Um, I think we did a good job last year, but I think we can do better. And I think you guys deserve that. Um, so, so yeah, I hope, I hope that helps answer that question. Yeah. Thanks for that. I think it does. Um, yeah, we're always trying to do things better. Even if we're good at it, we're going to do better. Um, this next question I actually want to answer because <laughs> Mr. Amen, he answered this already, right? But it is super important. <laughs> Please make it. <laughs> Please do everything to make the orientation. It sets a good foundation for the rest of the year. All right. Um, the next comment, that's great. I don't know what we said, but thank you, Aya. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, next question is a long one here. Uh, what about the two days which kids will be home? Would there be no online teaching or recorded classes at least? If we move on this blended learning plan, it shows the number of teachers as well exactly half as the student will be taken before COVID. I'm not sure, but what so about I that think question? Mm -hmm. I think she's talking about room and Zoom. And uh, uh -huh. again, okay. uh, I think Jeffrey sort of answered that earlier. But again, uh, our focus is the students who are on campus, they're the students we want to focus on. Because if, if we do this room and Zoom where you have half of your class on your laptop and half of your class in the classroom, your, your focus is just two ways. Uh, and it, I, we don't think that's ideal. And, and we've been working on that last year. And we still believe that the, the focusing on the students who are in campus and then giving, the, giving them that work and that asynchronous work 
when they're at home that actually builds inquiry and independence on its own um, and i know that it's tough to sort of get your head around that sometimes and, and i know it's like well you're reducing the time that they're actually with their teachers and stuff and again going back on what mark said we really do want to have our students on campus 100 percent but at the moment we feel like this is the best educational model that that we could come up with in the parameters that we have all right thank you for that next question for new parents, we need orientation regarding Alma. Um, I'll answer a, a part of this. Um, we always have in our newsletter, I've always included videos of Alma and how to log on, how to create an account. Those videos have always been there in our newsletter. Uh, so if you are a returning or a new student, you'll receive the newsletter soon. I'm not sure you'll get one tomorrow because I have to train other teachers on how to use the newsletter because we use Google Sites. But um, inshallah, you'll get it next Thursday. We'll start the newsletter process next Thursday. Um, but we do have videos on there all the time. And we actually have it. We actually have it on our website as well. Um, if you have any questions on it, just please email me. All right. Um, I'll make sure that you'll have a proper uh, orientation or exposure, at least to Alma. Um, yeah. Principal, do you have yeah. Love, now that's a, that's a good question. Um, it might be something when we have our back to school night, we don't know, we haven't decided on the format of what the back to school night thing is, uh, but that would be something that I'll make note of and maybe consider putting in so that all of our students, even even returning parents, uh, know how to use Alma and get in because sometimes they, they forget how to use it and access it. But uh, yeah, as Justin said, it's, it's usually the information on the parent information thing. I'll consider putting it into my back to school night agenda. And uh, Ms. Shubana is our software IT engineer here, and she's usually great at get accessing and talking with new new parents and getting them access to that as well. So there is, that's a trifecta of an approach, hopefully, to, to that question. Definitely, definitely. All right, next question. Will upper school students return to Google Classroom? Good question. So uh, as I said earlier, um, Alma, again, is going to be the, the go-to and the central point for everything. But if the teacher decides and, you know, I, I want to trust my teacher's best judgment and I don't want to limit their resources in any way. So if they decide they want to use a Google Classroom in their class and a lot of teachers do and they'll have the link for the Google Classroom in Alma so that the kids can just click the link, and go straight to the Google Classroom. But this year we are allowing our teachers to use Google Classroom. So hopefully that's good news for, for students and teachers. And, and I can kind of jump on that as well, not in regards to Google Classroom, but in terms of, of having one place to find information. You know, I know how complicated it is for parents to have a, a list of links and not know which link to click on at different times and which one goes where. So the goal, I think, for the whole school is to simplify and streamline the communication between us and students and between us and the parents. So, you know, for secondary, that means logging into Alma and that's your one stop shop for elementary. Um, we've got two programs that we'll be using. We'll be using Seesaw and we'll be using uh, Dojo. And so that's really, you know, to, to limit the communication, make it as easy as possible for parents to know what's going on and for students to be able to find the work that they need to do. And Jordan, you just made me think about something very important because uh, we always say this, we always stress this, but I'm going to say it again on this live. The Raptor report on Thursdays is your one-stop shop for major school news. So when I send it out, every Thursday, you can expect to see updates from lower school, updates from upper school, updates on what's going on in the school, next week's calendar, what's going on, a message from the head of school and also the principals. You'll see updates from all departments as well. This is the one-stop shop, at least for communication, major communication involving the school. So please, 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 when I send out the Raptor reports every single Thursday, please take five minutes with your favorite coffee, tea, or libation, and just read through whatever interests you in your section. You're going to have news and updates, everything, right? It takes five minutes to read everything as well. And if you don't like the format of things like that, let me know. You know, I'm open to suggestions, all right? So let's move to the next question, which is, I, I'm going to answer this one as well. So last year, Wednesday was for Blue Group, but now in a previous email, I mentioned first day of returning students is Wednesday, but for the red group. So have the days changed for each color group? No, the day has not, days have not changed, but orientation week is different than regular school weeks, okay? So our red group is gonna be, uh, for regular school weeks, 
uh, Sunday and Tuesday. Blue groups will remain Monday and Wednesday. But for orientation purposes, right, um, we're going to have the returning students, uh, all the, uh, not all the returning, but all students going to be red are coming back Wednesday. All that are going to be blue are coming back Thursday. This is just for orientation week. Moving forward after that, it will go back to the regular schedule and frequency of what red color group means and what um, blue color group means. The only difference is that there's no Thursday virtual schooling, okay? It's going to alternate colors each of those weeks, okay? So that's as best as I can describe it. I don't know if anyone else has any other clarification on that before I go ahead. All right. Um, Mr. Gregory, this is to you directly. <laughs> All right. So when you connect to upper, upper students to Wi-Fi, is that for school supply devices or do they need to bring their own devices and what do they bring? So grade 6 through 12, uh, we are a BYOD. So uh, BYOD stands for bring your own device. Uh, so yes, we would want you to bring your own device uh, to campus. So that it means that when the student brings their device to campus, we get them connected to the student uh, Wi-Fi, which... You know, obviously has some protection and some websites blocked uh, for child safety and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, and then if it's what device to bring, uh, we're pretty open. Like I've, I had a grade 12 student last year who used an iPad and he was just digitally just brilliant at using his iPad and typing on his iPad, which is great. But for the most part, I do recommend getting a laptop because you want a keypad. Um, if you're coming into high school, especially, you're going to be able to need to you know, do essays and stuff on your laptop. And I did, I think it's a better device to use. But it, that being said, I don't want to limit that to, to people. And some people are better at using iPads and typing on iPads than they are on their keyboards. That's just the, the way the world has gone. Uh, but yeah, we are a BYOD school and we encourage you to bring in a laptop of some sort. Okay. think we answered that one already and um, so yeah we, we answered that question before all right um marwa said is there a chance for online orientation for those who are not able to attend on tuesday if so that's a that'll be a new student who can't isn't here on the tuesday and um, for me, at least, uh, I will make note of any of the new students who don't show up. And if they're brand new to campus and completely lost, um, what I'll do on the first day that they arrive or show up is I'll bring them in and we'll do sort of a, I'll get a, a, a student to give them a tour of the school and I'll get them set up um, just as I would any other student that sort of enrolls mid-year. You know, we have students who come brand new into us in October. Um, I, if possible i would avoid that because I, I do think you know you don't get the same experience because you just sort of get um straight into class and whatnot on that day but um if not don't worry about it we are a welcoming staff here and and we have great students who are are, are used to new students showing up all the time so don't don't be too concerned about that and um, jordan for you and i assume that's different yeah, I can take that one. Uh, so for us, yeah, same deal. It is really important. With elementary school, the big deal is to know where the classroom is located and to form that, uh, that connection and establish that bond with the teacher as early as possible. So I would stress that if at all possible, please make an effort to come on the orientation day. Um, that said, if it's not possible for you, what we'll do as a school is connect you with your students, teach with your child's teacher. Uh, so that you can at least maybe have a quick conversation on Zoom or, or get to see their face so you know who exactly you're going to. Um, and then when the student does arrive on campus, uh, as as Eamon said, we'll do a quick orientation, lead them around the building, show them the important things, and and uh, and fill in all the gaps. But, but again, if at all possible, it really is important for them to come in on that orientation day, even though it's a short time. All right. This is a good question as well. Students are age 12 plus fully vaccinated, feeling that the upper school risk has been minimized. Could this change in the next few months? I think me or Mark could answer that, but I think yeah. that yeah. You, you, you should, uh, whoever that is answered their question in themselves, of course, yeah, that can be reviewed. Um, and I think that's what the ministry is doing right now. They're just trying to gather as much data before making an informed decision uh, on, on what best to do. But uh, myself personally, I, I'm hoping that because 
ages 12 plus that are going to be fully vaccinated, that there is some consideration on to having them on campus fully. Um, mm-hmm. But again, that's that's something that as a school we can't really abide by. That's going to be more of a Ministry of Public Health and a Ministry of Education question. Yeah, I think you answered that so well that Mark says, no, I don't even need to jump in on this one. <laughs> All right. So next question here um, for returning students. When are they going to know about their teacher's name and class number, please, from Ms. Rachel? Soon, um, both for upper school and lower school, returning, returning students will know very soon. We are um, finalizing that as we speak um, for new parents coming in. Um, it's a bit less of an issue because you don't the students don't know who any of those teachers are, are at any anyway. But um, your, if you're a returning student, your, uh, your teachers will be reaching out to you shortly. Um, in, if you're in lower school and an upper school, you'll be getting your schedule sent to you shortly. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you don't know that yet, you will soon. All right. Um, next grade one will have a daily attendance face to face teaching Jordan. Yeah, I kind of addressed this a little bit before. Um, So all students will be, attendance will be taken for all students every day, whether they're on campus or not. Um, The default for students that are at home uh, studying asynchronously um, is present online. Uh, On their report card, it'll be reflected as present. It just comes up as though they were in school that day. Uh, If they are face-to-face, then they will be marked uh, either present in school or absent uh, if they are if they are slated to be in school on that day, uh, and that's the same I believe for all students uh, pre K all the way up through grade twelve. All right, thank you. So the next question is for Lena. Um, I'll answer this question. Um, if you are a returning family, you would keep the same color group that you had from last year. If you are a new family into the GAQ family. Um, We will send that to you shortly. I'm going to work with our admissions team uh, to email this information out um, or communicate this information out to all the new families. So for the new families, please be a little bit more patient um, than you've already been. um, And we will email this information out to you very soon. Okay. Um, Next question. How is the school maintaining the COVID distance during the class in school? Uh, all desks are 1.5 meters away as per the Ministry of Public Health, and we have classroom sizes maxed at 15 um, so that students don't uh, break those distances. And of course, we make sure that they're wearing masks at all time. Uh, those type of offences in, in upper school, at least, uh, will be very serious. And I would have a parent conversation with any student that breaks any of our COVID protocols or even staff. Um, but yeah, we have our COVID policies and we enforce them regularly to make sure that our our community is safe and healthy. I know. I can say that those those same policies transfer down to elementary school as well. Uh, Same thing, distance between desks, mask policies enforced, uh, and a strict limit on number of students per classroom. Yeah, I'd like to to build on that. Um, We we got inspected I, I I can think of five times, um, but I feel like it was more than that um, last year. And on several occasions, we're told not only uh, had we sort of beat their standards with flying colors, um, but we were told that we were a model school um, and they actually sent inspectors into our school to look at what we were doing and try and replicate that in other schools. Um, to the extent that they had a re- uh, an article written about us in the Gulf Times um, about our level of COVID safety and and how they really felt like a, as a school in Qatar, we sort of sent the bench- benchmark for what schools should be doing. Um, and so it's it's a real point of pride. Um, and and when you say the word safety, we were like this pre-COVID. I mean, you uh, many of you have heard me say this over the years. You know, you send our, your child to us eight hours a day, you are putting their lives in our hands, their education in our hands. As a fellow parent, that's the greatest compliment and sense of responsibility you can bestow upon another adult. Um, We do not treat that lightly um, and COVID is no exception. All right, Um, just so we are keeping some housekeeping um, expectations, uh, we we will stop at 1.30. 
Um, I just want to make sure that we can answer as many questions as possible. But this is a very busy time for the school leaders, and I want to respect their time. Uh, so we'll go to 1.30, and after that, any questions that are not answered, um, I'll do my best to answer these questions and get them out to you as soon as possible. All right. Next question for new parents. We do not yet know the apps to be installed for the online sessions. Um, Jordan, I think, you know, you said about using Seesaw, Raz Kids, and um, I know that uh, Class Dojo is def a definite um, in terms of that. I think that the teachers, will they email the parents about the Class Dojo registration? How would that work? Yes, that's going to come from the teachers because as a parent, you'll register and be added to each classroom. So if you have multiple children, you'll be added to multiple classrooms, one for each one. Uh, and that's going to be the same for uh, Seesaw, Class Dojo, uh, and Raz Kids because the kids will the kids will have their own login for those, uh, and then you'll have one that's connected to their account. And I think also for upper school. Um, Alma, Miss um, uh, Maureen, she would be able to help the parents uh, create and set up the Alma accounts. Uh, we'll work on the videos and the links so parents can have a video representation of how to do that as well. Um, so there is some structure with that too in, com in, in terms of Alma, which will be the main communication tool uh, for upgrading. Yeah, and then, and then we use G Suites, which isn't really, you don't have to download any of those applications or anything. It's just sort of on your, your Google Chrome and, and things. But uh, yeah, it's G Suites and Alma essentially is the two things that we focus on. And both of them are, don't really require any downloading of apps or anything. And um, nothing that's won't, it's not, nothing that costs anybody anything. Yeah. And uh, students are given a Zoom account as well uh, by GEMS, which we set them up on and, and they get that as well. All right. So this is an interesting question as well from Ms. Lena. Uh, for non-vaccinated students below 12, will there be a weekly rapid test? We have not had any commute that was not required last year. Um, we've had no communication about that uh, at this time. Um, if that is a requirement from the MOE or the MOPH, then obviously we'd follow any government regulation. Um, but uh, my, my guess is that would not be the case since they did not do that last year. Um, what we did instead is maintain the COVID safety protocols we were just talking about, keep children what they called COVID safety bubbles um, and be able to contact trace students um, if there was uh, anybody that they would have been exposed to that would have had COVID, um, which which worked quite well last year. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So next question here about the plus 12 and over fully vaccinated um, and also in rec recognition to the blended learning at 50% capacity. How would we answer this question? I think we answered it earlier, but again, it goes back to that thing that I think they're just <clears throat> gathering data right now in the Ministry of Public Health. It's not that the school hasn't recognized that, we have, um, but ultimately that comes down to the Ministry of Public Health and the Ministry of Education. They need to make that decision uh, and we have to abide by their rules. Um, but I'm sure they're considering right, that right now and they've had that feedback. Um, so hopefully that's something that they, they review in the next month or two and we can have more students on campus. But at the moment, we're following the ministry's guidelines and we're adhering to their sort of um, rules and regulations. Uh, you know, I think this, this question kind of ties into some something that someone asked earlier about whether or not um, you know, we could expect things to change at some point. And I think that that's probably the only thing we can definitely be sure of, that there'll be changes as we go along. And, um, and this, the, you know, the school and the ministries will be as, as flexible and uh, accommodating as possible, I assume. Oh, we will anyway. All right. So next question here. Um, are you going to allow students who are not vaccinated onto campus? Yes. All right. We'll move on. <laughs> um, and are all staff vaccinated at this point? Yes. We'll move on. <laughs> Will upper school have access to lockers this year? Maybe. Um, that is something I will review with my team. Um, but lockers can be touch points, and we want to limit our touch points according to our COVID guidelines. And again, it goes into that 
but it is something that we'll review as we move forward. Um, I know that the guy, uh, our students really sort of want that, so they're not, not carrying around all of their bags the whole time. Uh, but at the moment, it's a no, but it's definitely something that we're going to revisit and, and maybe hopefully reintroduce. All right. Um, by the way, uh, for all the uh, audience, uh, YouTube land, Facebook, if I skip your questions, because we've answered it already. So just don't feel, don't get mad at me, okay? We just answered it already. And just for the sake of time, I want to be efficient. Um, okay, so the next question here, when will I know when my course change request has been accepted? Um, that varies depending on students. Um, so, you know, a student in sixth grade who puts in the, the course change request form, um, sometimes it's easier for me to change that because it's just in sixth grade. As you get up, uh, asthma, I believe you're going into grade 11, I think. Uh, it's a bit more complicated. Um, so I will either fix it and it's no problem or I'll sit down with you and go through it and make sure that we optimize your schedule so that you get as much of what you want as possible. Uh, there's obviously subject to availability. Some classes are full and some aren't and a few things like that. And we have to make sure your credit, requ uh, your credit requirements in high school are, are met. Are met. Um, so, but I am hoping to have most of those done by August 24th. So if anybody has filled that in, I'm going to try make this, the schedule changes by then. Um, but if not, don't worry about it. Um, the, the changes can happen up until September 16th. So I'll be working on them up until September 16th. Okay. All right. mm -hmm. Good. Lena, thank you for the clap. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, so this question was well, not a question, a statement. Having no online teaching for students staying home is a big loss in teaching time. Any responses to that one? I, I think we all agree with that statement. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we obviously want the hundred percent students back on campus, but we're we're in a COVID world and we have to have a blended learning model. And the blended learning model that we have at the moment is that students are at home twice or three times a week. Um, and that's what we're moving forward with. But I guess Ed, we do agree with you. And we can't wait till students are back on campus, but we have to work within the parameters that we have at the moment. Okay. Yeah, and, and I'll touch on that as well. I'll, I'll touch on that as well really quickly that you know, it, it's all about quality over quantity. You know, and, and as I think we've addressed it a couple of times with, with the whole room and Zoom concept, it negatively affects everybody involved. It, it negatively affects the students that are in the classroom. It affects the students that are at home and, and it affects the teacher's ability to teach. And by not doing the live online classes, it enables the teacher to spend more time with each student in class, which improves the quality of the education. Uh, and that's really what we're all about is, is making it a quality education. Um, and by having that alternating Thursday, that all that means is we have more bodies on campus in seats more often. Uh, and again, that's that's what we're all about. We're trying to get as many kids here on campus as frequently as possible. Very good point, Joe. Well, quality is better than uh, quantity, right? I always say that in my life, so. <laughs> all right. Um, I'll answer this question from Marwa. Uh, to what time is school open to buy the uniform? So we are open um, Sunday through Thursday from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Um, and then this Saturday, we will be open as well from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. So if you want to come in to pay any fees or you want to buy uniforms, we're also open this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay. Next question, is there going to be sports clubs for this year like basketball? Um, I think I can answer this one too. We won't know until the ministry, uh, MOPH, uh, says so. Right. So we're always going to follow their directives. We're always going to consult with them. But at this moment, we have not been given any clearance for after school activities or for the sports activities as we were once in the past. And I'm a basketball coach. I cannot wait to get out there and coach basketball again. So Mr. Gregory's soccer right, or football, as they say. <laughs> so you can't wait until this happens. This is a good question as well. Will middle schoolers have semester exams? Uh, it's changed. Uh, every year, and we've had discussions about this as a staff and as a team. Um, at the moment, uh, last year, we didn't have middle school exams at the end of the year. Um, but there are talks about eighth graders maybe having some form of middle school exams to get them ready for the high school exam format and semester exams. But at the moment, uh, for the most part, there won't be 
semester exams for middle school. All right. Um, do new upper school students have to bring their phone with them on Tuesday? Uh, we have a strict no mobile phone policy, and that I think has been lenient over last year, just because you know students need Uber and they need to be in contact with their parents due to COVID. And um, I would suggest bringing your phone, and when you're in school, just turning it off and keeping it in your bag or in a safe place, and um, just to have. Um, so I hope hopefully that answers it because there's the official line and then there's obviously uh, the practical line. Um, but as long as you're being respectful and you're not using the phone in class or during uh, times when you're meant to be focusing on learning, uh, there isn't any issue having your mobile phone. Yeah. Next question I can answer a little bit. Maybe um, you know Jordan, uh, Mark would have more clarity, uh, but. For this question, because it's a pre-K student, there won't be any Arabic for a pre-K student. We start Arabic in KG1, Islamic studies in KG1. Um, but in general, and Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, but in general, I think if you're an American passport, uh, you have the ability to choose if you want native or non-native. Um, no. I'm no. not wrong. <laughs> it, depends. it totally depends on how you have registered underneath your QID. You may be dual nationality, but if your QID says that you're Egyptian, you're Egyptian. If your QID says you're from the United States, you're from the United States. We have to follow whatever you've registered yourself as here when you came in country. Um, so if, if you have sort of cleared with the local authorities that you are from the United States, then we would treat you that way. But uh, if the Ministry of Education thinks you are Egyptian, then at some point Arabic will be required for your child. Certainly doesn't mean if you're registered as from the USA, they can't take Arabic if they want to, they could, but it's a question of whether or not it's required. Um, and it really comes down to how you're registered with the Ministry of Education. All right. Thank you for that clarification, Mark. I knew there was something. That's why I prefaced it. Like, interrupt me if you can. <laughs> All right. Um, Lubna, thank you. No, thank you for showing up today. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have security cameras in pre-K classes and around the premises? Uh, I'll answer that one. Um, I don't have security cameras in every nook and cranny of the building. Um, and that is actually a bit of a point of pride. I've been asked that before. Um, we are a school um, and I trust our staff and our kids. Those security cameras are designed to keep bad people off our campus, um, not to monitor every inch of, you know, that the, I, I remember meeting with a, a head of school at one point who was very proud of the fact that he had a display of, of uh, videos in his, in his office and he could sit in his office and never once leave it. And by flicking through his cameras, see every nook and cranny of his school. I don't want to work in that school. I want to be out of my office, walking around, interacting with kids. Um, we have adequate staff supervision uh, everywhere we are. Um, we do have security cameras uh, facing out of the building and in some areas of the building we meet. There are requirements in this country um, for security coverage um, via cameras in public buildings, and we meet all the local requirements. Um, but no, they do not meet every nook and cranny of, of every room and in every area of the building, and, and I don't think we need it. All right, we're in the last five minutes, so I'm gonna answer some questions if I can. Um, if I can't, then we can go ahead. Um, are lower school and upper school still gonna take art and music? Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, what else? I'm going through the questions. Oh yeah, this is a good question for Jordan. Um, is recess coming back? It won't be call as of now. And again, everything is subject to change, but uh, we're not calling it recess. It won't be at a determined time. All students will have a supervised time of play. Uh, it will be different for every class because the classes aren't allowed to intermingle. Uh, but all students in elementary will have a time to, you know, as we say, get the wiggles out um, every day. So yes, but, but it won't be that, that recess lunch block that everyone's used to, that has been suspended for the time being. Okay, uh, appreciate that. Will lunch time still be in the classroom for upper school? Yes. 
Fair enough. Next, <laughs> what grades will have study hall this year? Um, so, grade six to eight, every second, uh, well, I have to figure it out, but I think it's every second day would have a study hall. Um, so, one day they come in, they have PE, and then the next day they come in, they have study hall. Uh, that's for grades six through eight. Uh, grades nine and 10 usually don't have any study hall. Mm -hmm. But in grades 11 and 12, if you're a junior or a senior who's taken three AP courses or more, uh, we've tried to give them those students a library class. So that gives them that extra time to uh, uh, study their AP courses. But the high school component doesn't have a study hall section. Um, yeah. All right. I just heard a big airplane come past. <laughs> what was going on? All right. So a couple of questions here. Can the student change their courses once they've chosen? Yeah, that's what the, the, the schedule change request is. Uh, that will be available up until uh, September 16th, and you can make changes up to then. Of course, if it's approved by myself and uh, it has, there's enough space in the courses that they want to pick. After September 16th, we don't change. Um, so we encourage our students to make commitments, especially if they take AP courses that they are committed to taking that course for the whole year. So if they pick a, an AP course and they're in it after September 16th, they're going to be in that AP course classroom for the whole year. And um, so it's, it, there's a lot of studies and a lot of research about committing and being fully committed to courses and how that improves actually test scores. So that's something that we're, we find and, and, and important here in the school. All right. Uh, last question. Does everyone need to bring a device to school like last year? Yes. <laughs> Upper school, yes. Lower school. Lower no. school, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I can fit one more question in. And this is, uh, let me see here. If the kid is native Arabic, what determines whether he takes Islamic studies or not? It's a good question. If he's native Arabic, he will take Islamic studies native so native Islamic, and if he, yeah, that's the best way to do that. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And then that's about it. I think everyone else, I really appreciate these uh, well wishes for the session. Um, if it wasn't for my AC, I'd be sweating, you know, because there's a lot of good questions here. Uh, but I really appreciate everyone's time uh, coming in from YouTube land, Facebook, and just really uh, sitting here with us today. Now, keep in mind, parents, that we will have this recorded. It's going to be stored on our YouTube page, on our Facebook uh, page, right? So if you didn't come here today and your friends are asking you what they said and how it worked, they can go to our Facebook page today. Go to our YouTube page right now and check it out, okay? So we want to thank everyone today for being here. Um, and then any other parting messages from the principals here? Anything else you want to say to the parents before we go? Uh, I, I'll add that just, you know, students learning isn't just a teacher's responsibility. It's, it's the support around a child in every aspect of their life, uh, from the parent to the receptionist to, to admin and to the teachers themselves. And I think as long as we're all on the same page and we work together as a team to try and improve the school uh, and improve learning here, uh, I think our students are going to be in great shape and they're going to have a great year. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's our commitment to you all um, to do the absolute best possible and uh, for your children to give them the best education available. Um, and that regardless of the COVID circumstances, regardless of the situation, um, that's our commitment to you all. And uh, I'm excited to be part of that team. Yep, and I just wanted to thank everybody again. Uh, great questions, uh, really wonderful interaction from all of the parents and students here online with us. And uh, like I said at the beginning, uh, and it sort of touches on what Eamon was just saying, the school is a community, you know, teachers, administrators, parents and students, and I really look forward to uh, getting to see as many people and talk to all of you. Mark, anything you wanna to say to the people? Go Raptors. All right. <laughs> the last thing I will say to everyone, I always tell parents this on tours. If you see me working at another school, that's my twin. It's not me. There's no other school I'd like to work for other than Jim's American Academy. That's how I end it for today. Thank you, everyone, for coming. We really appreciate you. 
We can't wait to start the school next week, right? 2021, we own it. All right, have a good day, y'all.